The Great Red River Flood. These are our stories. Stories of struggle. Stories of faith. Join the Summer Performing Arts Company as we present Keep the Faith, a community celebration with original script and score created by area composers and spa students. Performances will be July 25th and 26th at the Chesterfords Auditorium. Purchase your ticket today for just $5 at the Red River High Box Office. Keep the Faith, a community celebration from tragedy to triumph. These are stories you'll never forget.
No, I'm sorry, sir. Our best prediction still stands at 49 feet. <laughs> so you don't have the update then? No, I'm sorry, sir.
Thanks to Jeff Jacoby for that breathtaking update. And now let's take some calls. Hi, you're on the air. Hi. Yeah, I'm kind of afraid to ask because you're probably going to say there's been no change, but has the blood press prediction changed from 49 feet? No, I'm sorry, sir. That's our information. Where do you get your information? From the National Weather Service, sir. Is the National Weather Service located anywhere remotely near here?
um, tell us again what you want. Okay, as mayor of East Grand Forks, I'm asking for mandatory evacuation of East Grand Forks for a period of at least five days. We will close the water treatment plant because we have developed a leak. The sewer system could be totally shut down. We could lose our electricity and most important, for your own safety. We've put up a good fight, but we couldn't quite make it. And for your own safety, I'm asking you to leave the city and come back when things are safe. I don't know. 
could probably expect four to six feet of water in your basement, ma'am. Thanks for calling. Let's call it, please. Can I have the status of 701 4th Street Northwest? The Sherlock Park area. I'm sorry, ma'am. Things don't look at all good in that area. You can expect four to six feet of water on your main floor. Or maybe even worse. Some of the rooftops are still visible. Now we have some announcements, don't we, Doug? Yes. Today, from noon until 4, all residents living south of 70th Avenue and west of Washington may return to their homes. This includes areas from Central Elementary up to, but not exceeding, South Forks Plaza. If you live not north of 70th Avenue, but on the north side of 70th Avenue itself, you may return to your home, provided that it is not east of Washington. If you live east of Columbia, west of Washington, and south of 70th Avenue, Columbia Road that is south of 70th Avenue, it is open. Also, all areas that are not north of 70th Avenue and still west of Washington are open. It's really very simple, folks. And another note, please. If you live in the White House between the red one and the blue one, please don't return because your basement has collapsed. <laughs> And also, beginning today at 11.30, the Red Cross will be serving those yummy hot drive through meals in the Sam's Club parking lot. And due to the overwhelming success in using this drive through system, the Red Cross is proudly announcing that they will be using this system in every national disaster yet to come. And if you don't feel like having drive through Red Cross meals, you can go to the 42nd Street Eatery. They're located on the 400 block of 42nd Street North, which is west of Washington, although not south of Seattle.
rental assistance, and uh, I'm staying with my cousin in Devil's Lake, and I was just wondering, can I cash that check and pay my cousin, but if I do, will I get audited by the government? Uh, I don't know, can somebody give me some help here? Okay, let me see if I got this right. If I get more than $10,000 worth of damage, I should contact SBA, right? And if I get less, I should contact FEMA. But what if I have flood insurance? Does that mean I get more money or less money?
questions that people may have about the cleanup process. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, I, I just wanted to let you know that uh, we have our basement all clear, and we ended up with about three feet of junk on our burn. Can you believe that? That's great. But do you have a question? Uh, no, I just thought you might like to know that our basement is completely germ-free. <laughs> oh, thank you for calling. Thank you. Next caller, please. Yeah, am I on? Yes, you're on. Yeah, well, I was just calling about that last caller. Uh, I would just like to say that we had our basement cleared two days ago. We had four to five feet on our roof. <laughs> that sounds like a record. They should give you a toll. Do you have a question? No. <laughs> well, thank you for calling. Hello, next caller. Um, yes, I've been listening, and I just wanted to say that I think we have everyone beat. You see, we had our basement cleared three days before we were evacuated. <laughs> well, ma'am, that sounds impossible. No, no it isn't. You see, my husband just knew we were going to get flooded, so he said, we're going to have to tear it out anyway. So we tore out our basement and put it on our berm three days before the flood.
what can I do about this? Well, ma'am, you know what they say. When in doubt, throw it out. <laughs> well, I do have a bit of trouble with that because we have the whole city, you see, so. Well, ma'am, if you really must keep your toys, what you have to do is first drill a hole in the little people, and then you dump them in the solution of a quarter cup of bleach to a gallon of water. <laughs> well, drilling a hole then kind of ruins the people because they're awfully small. Well, ma'am, if you don't, your children could put the contaminated toy in their mouth, and they could die. And if you like your kids, that's a bad thing. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Next caller, you're on the air. Yes, um, okay. 
can I help you? Okay. I have these people living in my house and they're driving me nuts. Well, I live in Thompson, and they're from Grand Forks. They're touching the stuff they should. Put that down! I told you not to touch that. Anyways, they're touching the stuff they shouldn't be touching. They're just driving me nuts. <laughs> and are these people related to you? Yeah. <laughs> so what you're dealing with here is a lot of uh, repressed anger towards these people. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the, the best probable solution to your problem would be to find a secluded area by yourself, uh, find an object that you care little or nothing for. Hang on. Shut your pie hole! On the phone! Go ahead. And as I was saying, after you find that object, then you should probably destroy it. <laughs>
Salvation Army is pleased to announce that we have space for operation at the South Park's Plaza. You may come in the west door and make your way to the back of the line, where you will wait for an endless amount of time. <laughs> After this endless amount of time, we'll get to this door. Six people may go in at once, and only six, I will tell you. <laughs> there are chairs here. What happens in there? We'll sit in the rows and someone else will yell at you for a while. <laughs> Nobody wants to, and we all 
yesterday I saw him cry. Like that. This is history. Right here in our little community. This was the worst flood in the history of our country. And it was right here. It's bigger than all of us. Yeah, big blood my life is ruined. <laughs>
had their spirits up, even though things are, you know, not very good right now, and just shook a few hands and um, told them, keep the faith, we'll, we'll make it through with no loss of life. I saw something uh, your mayor said the other day that struck me in particular. She said, what makes a community a place to live in is not the buildings, it's the people, the spirit and faith that are in those people. Water cannot wash that away, and fire cannot burn that away, and a blizzard cannot freeze that away. And if you don't give it away, it will bring you back better than ever, and we'll be there with you every step of the way. Thank you, and God bless you.
Students are celebrating not only the arts, but their growth in the arts yet to come. The song also symbolizes the passing of a class. This is the last summer program in which the class of 1998 will be able to participate. This passing of the tradition is represented by the two soloists selected to sing. Misty Cope, a senior, will sing the first verse, and then turn the spotlight over to eighth grader Billy Poles. Thank you. 